All right, joining us now, British Security Minister Tom Tugendat, and we'll put the question. Well, I, I've, I've got to say, first of all, I'm I'm impressed that Raf had had our our the guest out of our guest <laughs> list in, in Ukraine today. So, uh, You're Minister, a very slick operation, I think. Yes, <laughs> minister, thank That's you so much. Say. Thank yeah. you so much. So, uh, any insights on uh, that cryptic message? Well, look, you heard uh, yesterday the Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, uh, was talking about training uh, Ukrainian pilots. And I think mm -hmm. this is an incredibly important thing to do, because if we decide to uh, support with aircraft at any point, it would take several months to train pilots and to be able to deploy them. So if we want to reduce that time, should a decision be made, you want to begin the training now? And that's what we've started. Talking about, uh, about President Zelensky, uh, meeting the Prime Minister and uh, this, the, the and historic the King, yeah. speech. It's a remarkable speech, and, and to see it there given in uh, Westminster Hall, as you know, built uh, a thousand years ago by yeah. the son of William the Conqueror and has hosted all the great state occasions of England and the United Kingdom from the uh, trial of Charles I to mm -hmm. uh, you know, the laying in state of Her Late Majesty Queen Elizabeth. It's been a remarkable place to be and to see that speech given, you know, Pope John Paul II and Nelson Mandela are right. two others who've given speeches there. But his yesterday, a war leader at war, talking about liberty and reminding us of the battle that we fought from 39 to 45 and the heroic leadership of Churchill was, was a phenomenal, uh, phenomenal thing to watch. I was going to say, seeing images of <laughs> President Zelensky walking through Tin Downing, so moving. Yeah. When you thought, think about Churchill again from May of uh, 40 through, um, uh, through 45, uh, basically, especially, especially in 40 and 41, fighting to, to keep Western civilization alive, to see Zelensky there, it's really moving. Well, what moves us so much about Churchill is we know that he was on the front line of freedom at a time when Europe had succumbed to fascist totalitarian uh, brutality, uh, and it looked like freedom was being lost in the world. To see somebody standing up there as the vision as the embodiment of, of that fight for liberty that we now are blessed to enjoy uh, right. in, in our countries is, is hugely moving. And to see Zelensky doing that today mm -hmm. is a reminder that liberty is under threat around right. the world, the totalitarian Absolutely. aggression of the Russian state right. and Putin's dictatorship. They know they're on the front lines. So they they are, believe Absolutely. It. So <clears throat> I, I, uh, I enjoy Premier League football. And I, okay. at times, go Fan of the Tumbridge Angels. over to London. <laughs> and um, and in the past, when I went there, I was like, what are all these Russians doing here? And it seemed that, that, uh, that, that London had become a safe haven. For, and by the way, my son's a huge Chelsea fan, so especially a safe haven uh, for certain oligarchs. But there was a real problem at the start of the war. A lot of people looking to the British government saying, are they really going to crack down on all of the Russian money that is flowing through London? London's become a safe haven. Britain's become a safe haven. First of all, I'll ask, how's Britain doing? And secondly, I'll ask you, you have an announcement to make this morning uh, about some sanctions, new sanctions. Well, Joe, look, I was uh, a parliamentarian for a long time and I chaired the Foreign Affairs Committee. And the first, one of the first reports I did was entitled Moscow's Gold in 2018. It was about the dirty money that you're talking about, about the problem of, sadly, many open uh, market economies like ours, like right. yours, uh, have a problem with. And it's, the truth is that if you're an open economy, you have money from around the world, and sometimes that money may come from sources that you should be more careful of. And we have started cracking down under Prime Minister Sunak. He charged me. And the reason I took the job, the reason I accepted to be the security minister is to focus on domestic security. And for me, domestic security means economic security and it means fighting illicit finance. And that's exactly what we've been getting on with. And I have to say the work that's been done by the sanctions team under Foreign Secretary Cleverly and under the Prime Minister has been extremely important. 100 sanctioned individuals in the UK. Uh, the Chelsea Football Club that you cite has been mm -hmm. sold and the money... Uh, will, I hope, soon be going into a foundation that will be supporting reconstruction. Now safely in the, in the hands of the Los Angeles Rams owner, right? So, well, you know, exactly. we have some other foreign owners that we're exactly. happy with. Exactly. Yeah. Though but, I'm not going to get involved well, in state no, politics. No, no. But, but, let, but let's, <laughs> let, let's talk about uh, today, uh, yes. the new sanctions. Right. What are you guys doing? Well, look, we've all sadly been facing ransomware attacks from different jurisdictions. Far too many of them have come out of Russia. 
We know that. And today we have announced that the UK and the United States, again, as allies working incredibly closely together, have sanctioned uh, seven ransomware individuals who have been launching ransom attacks on our countries. Now, this isn't just about national security. This is about personal security. Right. These ransomware attacks have attacked hospitals. They've attacked uh, financial institutions. They've attacked us. So people watching today, people watching in the United Kingdom could have been affected by these ransomware attacks. So this isn't a state level action. This is a personal action. This is about protecting the British people and protecting the American people. And on that note, there has been a sense here as this war about to the one year mark that Russia in the corner is going to lash out in different ways. One might be more cyber attacks, more ransomware attacks, state sponsored or otherwise. Uh, how are the British people girding themselves for what could be a very lengthy fight? And you mentioned the economic security. That includes a cost of living crisis right there. Uh, price of gas, obviously very high. The economic fallout from this war may not be going anywhere anytime soon. Are the people ready for that? So the UK has demonstrated, and I don't know if you saw yesterday the images from Westminster Hall, but the remarkable support for President Zelensky yeah. demonstrates that this is a whole nation. You can't put a cigarette paper between any of the parties. You can't, right. put a, you know, you can't walk down the street in the UK without seeing more Ukrainian flags than UK flags. Right. Right. It's a remarkable demonstration of national outpouring of support because we understand what it's like. We understand what it's like to be alone. Uh, or to feel alone uh, mm -hmm. in defense of freedom, and the Ukrainians have done. And so we're absolutely with them. But look, it's certainly true there are challenges ahead. There's no hiding it. We know that uh, the price of gas has been an issue, but actually what the government's been doing in lowering the price of gas for individual homes in the UK has been hugely important. And the way in which we're looking at our supply chains and making sure that we're more resilient is fundamental to the work that we're doing as a government. And uh, it's really making a difference. Now, we're doing a lot of that together because making sure that we're working with allies and friends is part of our security. British right. Security Minister Tom Tugendhat, thank you so much for you. joining us this morning uh, for that announcement. We appreciate yeah. it.